Okay, guys, um, anyways, hi, so my baby's sleeping right here, so I'm not gonna be super loud in this video, turn it up if you want to hear it more, um, coconut water, okay, first of all, okay, so she'll be three weeks old tomorrow, love that for her, um, being a mom, obviously everyone knows it changes you so much, um, but you don't know in what ways it's going to change you exactly, and it's changed me in ways obviously I couldn't anticipate, but um, it's made me a lot stronger of a person, and the way that I, like, my values, and how I allow people to treat me or my family or the type of people I allow around me which I've always been that way but it's made it even more prominent in my mind and um it just made me more of a had more of a backbone because we all know Libra placements struggle with having a strong backbone um, which I, I think I have sometimes, but sometimes I, I really, really, really don't. <laughs> it's probably like the Pisces mixed with the Libra, but, um, so yeah, it might not seem like it, but I'm actually like too nice to like people sometimes, um, and it makes people treat me like they can walk all over me. Um, I don't like being held to a certain, you need to be this type of way. I'm not going to say standard because I don't even think it's a standard. I just, my biggest pet peeve and relations with other people is the types of people who put all these expectations on you not even just expectations but if you don't act a certain way they try to bring you down or make you feel guilty people who try to guilt you into doing things or being a certain type of person or acting a certain type of way is like my biggest stay away type thing like I stay away from those people as much as I possibly can but sometimes you can't stay away from people that are in your life and you can't really get away from them because of certain reasons you're connected to them through certain ways but I avoid people who use guilt to control people at all costs like I cannot stand that my biggest avoidance with people that type okay I can't talk right now but the type of people I avoid the most is people who use guilt or manipulation to control how you act or control the way you do things or try to guilt you into being a certain person or acting in a certain way or guilt you if you don't be a certain person or act a certain way. I'm a very free-flowing energy. I like to just be myself and that's why I can't be around controlling people because I feel like I'm, I can't be myself and that's the worst feeling ever when you can't be yourself. So, um, I, yeah, I was, I came down to earth to be different and to kind of, um, show people in a way that you don't have to be a certain type of way, you don't have to follow traditional norms. Um, and you can be different, but being different is going to come with backlash from people, I suppose. But yeah, so I'm really annoyed because my camera wasn't charging, so it might die soon, guys, and I'm going to have to restart filming soon. But, um, yeah, I don't like guilt trippers. I don't like being guilted into being a certain person. At that point, I'll just run away. <laughs> Sag Moon, out, you know? 
I don't like being like constricted and told I need to fit into this box and act this certain type of way or I'm not a good person. That's all up for debate, you know? Um, yeah. I'm just the type of person I am. And since I'm sensitive, I, I think that people, some people think that they can guilt me into being a certain type of person or acting a certain type of way. And maybe um, subconsciously it worked in the past, but not anymore. I think becoming a mom, I'm just like, who the F do you think you are? Because I'm very, it's very easy for me to feel guilt for not, for, I just don't like to hurt people's feelings or to make people feel not good or whatever. Um, so yeah, I could feel guilt from that and I don't like people who use that guilt against you and to manipulate you or try to control you. So that's what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, it's just become really, I think it was a subconscious thing and it's come really into my awareness when people try to use guilt to manipulate or control me. I do not appreciate it. So... Yeah, that probably makes no sense. <laughs> it's probably very vague because I can't really address the actual thing, but um, yeah, I'm not, I, becoming a mom has made me see things completely differently and from a new perspective and just a lot of subconscious things. I don't know if it's like the hormones and the postpartum and just your emotions are everywhere and you, your emotions kind of shape your personality, so your personality is everywhere, I feel like, kind of. So you're very, like, malleable, maybe. I don't know if that's true, but I kind of feel that um, when you're going through postpartum, and I just see a lot of subconscious things more clear now. So, yeah, it's just a lot of subconscious things are coming to the forefront, and I'm able to see them, and it's shifting, and I think that's, like, a survival thing. It's probably happening on purpose, from whatever survival thing we have to just you really recognize things differently to protect your family and yourself so um yeah so like I've heard a lot of women say when they're pregnant their instincts are really heightened which I really definitely felt and you like don't want to be around negative energy you don't want to be around a bunch of people because you just sense everything and definitely that's true for pregnancy but I think postpartum, it's a hundred times more, ten times more at least, of those instincts that you already had high ten instincts from pregnancy, but I feel like they go even higher up postpartum because you like have this baby outside of you to protect, that which is like even more extreme to protect and take care of and to be on guard about and all that stuff. Um so yeah, I just really am seeing people's true colors like so easily now even more than before and I just I have a very low bullshit meter <laughs> if there's a little bit of, if there's like people who are bullshitters or people who try to manipulate or people whatever type of person it is just bullshit I can just sense it right away and it's just like wow I can't believe I was just like subconsciously letting this happen before you know so that's interesting about postpartum. I don't know if anyone else has experienced that. I'm just very aware of my thoughts all the time and of my emotions. So maybe I'm just like hyper aware of it. But I'm like, oh my god. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, also today I went to the dentist to get... Okay, so I have a permanent retainer on the... T it's like a wire with glue or whatever, you know? On the top, like... I don't know how many six teeth and the bottom six teeth. I don't know how many teeth. Just like the here, here, here and here. So I've had that since I've had my braces off, which I got them off when I was like 14. <laughs> so it's been like 10 years. And I hate it. And then I was looking up, you can get like metal poisoning from, I don't even know, girl. And I was tripping off. I was like, I had this the whole time I was pregnant. I was like, girl, I can. Anyway, so I'm like really, okay. And then I heard this actress doing an interview said that she got her permanent retainer m removed and it made her neck pain go away. Go away. And I have like chronic neck pain every single day. I have neck pain. And I'm like, I want to get this removed. So I went to the dentist today to get it, to get it removed. They didn't end up removing it. Um, but they're going to in like two weeks. I have another appointment. 
but they did because I have really bad TMJ, which if you have TMJ, I feel for you. It's like the worst thing ever where your jaw is just, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just out of alignment kind of. So it hurts. It's like the muscles are like inflamed and the joint is like not hitting right or whatever. So he gave me masseter Botox. He gave me 20 units total. And this is not for wrinkles, you guys. It's not. It's Botox, but it's not for wrinkles. Um, it is to relax the muscle because that's what Botox really does. So he gave me 20 units total, 10 units here. Wait, no. Five units here, five units here, and then five units in my temples, which I never got before. I've had my masseters done twice, like a year ago and then a year before that. But um, I never had it here, and I have... My muscles are really tight here and really tight here, and it's supposed to kick in in like two to three days. That's how long it takes Botox to kick in. And it's to relax the muscles from teeth grinding. I, I grind my teeth in my sleep, so that's the cause of my TMJ, and I just have like a crossbite kind of. Yeah, so. Yeah, and if I'm all over the place, I'm sorry, but. So, he, yeah. He gave me that. Honestly, whenever they do it, it kicks in instantly for me, like a little bit. And then over the next two days, it will kick in a lot and feel amazing. But every time, the last two times I got it done too, um, I feel better like instantly, which you could say because it's kind of like acupuncture where you go into the muscle. So that's probably the reason. But yeah, this stuff is like, I have so much pain in my jaw and my temples because it's just like the muscles are really tense every day. So I'm really excited over the next couple days. The muscles are going to relax and it just is amazing. So if you have TMJ, definitely check that out and see if that's an option for you. But I'm also going to get this retainer removed and then um, a mouth guard made, which I already have a mouth guard, but the ones they have there, I don't know. I'll, I'm going to make my decision, but yeah, I need to start wearing my mouth guard <laughs> at night. He said it really will help because I wasn't really wearing it because I thought it wasn't helping. So... Yeah, that's my TMJ update. Um, so I went there today. I brought my baby. Um, and she was crying a little bit, but he was super chill. He has like a one-year-old, so he gets it, you know? So it's actually my first time going to that dentist, and they are so nice there. I'm like, I love them. So yeah. But yeah, I'll give you guys an update if the Master Botox and Temple Botox helped my TMJ. And how, you know, people get this um, for the aesthetic too, to kind of shrink their jaw muscle. Um, so yeah, well, mine's overly engorged. <laughs> what is it? Overly inflamed or whatever. Um, because of my TMJ, like my jaw muscle wouldn't be this big naturally. So it's just going to go back to its natural state from this. But yeah, so I'm excited about that. Um, and yes, Botox is, he's a dentist like he's not just a freaking cosmetologist not to shame that or anything but I'm just saying like he's like went to school for eight years and the studies that have come out now are say Botox is safe while breastfeeding and he assured me that so don't come on here with all the shit oh my god breastfeeding like stop okay it's fine okay I'm gonna listen to a, a doctor okay Anyways, well, honestly, more than just listening to the doctors, my intuition, like, I know it's not affecting her. So, anyways, oh, no, my battery's about to die. Okay, guys, I'm gonna have to come back and finish this video in a minute, so. Yeah. My baby is waking up, so I probably don't have a lot of time. This is a lot harder to YouTube when you have a baby that's not even a month old. But anyways, so I kind of wanted to re-say what I was saying in the beginning. Um, yeah, I just, I don't really know how to explain it. Just a new me has emerged from becoming a mother. And I also want to say that it's literally the most, it is very, very difficult. It is true what everyone says. Oh my God, it's so hard to be a mom or have a baby, whatever. Um. But it is the best feeling I've ever felt in my entire life. It truly, truly is the best feeling in the entire world. To have a baby and be a mother and just see your baby. I can't even explain it. It's true when people say that they can't explain it with words. You just have to experience it to have your own baby. It's the most 
amazing feeling in the entire world and I you know postpartum is hard for sure but there's just something even though it's a lot of emotions and hormones there's just something that this feels like I'm on a uh, a new high that I was never on before sorry I have gum in my mouth um yeah it just feels like a new level a new high a new way to see reality um that's just way brighter and better than before. That's the best I can explain it. Um, yeah, it's just it's just really exciting, and I love her so much. I never knew I could love someone so much. The love you have for your child is just this different type of love. Um, it's so pure, and she's so pure. It's just amazing to see a new, a brand new soul here on earth and them discovering everything for the first time and how much she's already grown and changed in just three weeks is wild and how smart she is already. She smiles at us. She's just so, so smart and she's already gained like 11 ounces. <laughs> she's breastfeeds a lot. She's so cute. She's waking up right now, so I don't know how much longer I have to do this, but um, she's not really going down again. She woke up right after my camera died, and she hasn't fully taken a nap since, so, um, which is probably good because then she'll sleep tonight more, but yeah, so yeah, I'm just, I feel like I'm turning a new leaf. As, become, as I've become a mother, and um, yeah, I just don't take any bullshit. My bullshit meter was pretty low to begin with, <laughs> but now it's even like, no, 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 no. You know, and I can just, I could just see people for who they truly are. Now it's like a switch went off in my brain. Like, I always felt like I could read people really well and see who they truly were, but like, it's even crazier now. It's like... I don't even know how to explain it. So, yeah. Here, she wants to be on camera. So, she is fussing to say hello. Say hello. 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 Let's turn around. Say hello, chubby cheek baby. It's so cute because in our ultrasound, the last ultrasound I had of her, she was all squished in there and her cheeks were so big and she was just squished in my last ultrasound of her. Squish baby, squish baby. You are a little squish. Squish baby. Baby shark doo 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 doo. But the song, You Are My Sunshine, I learned that on the ukulele when I first moved to Santa Cruz. It's like the only song I learned on the ukulele. So I feel like connected to that song. And then when I played it, I was like, oh my God, this is literally describing her. This song was always about her. You are my sunshine. And I love the part where you'll never know, dear, how much I love you. It's so true. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. She really is my only sunshine. Well, not my only sunshine, but she is my sunshine. And she's double Leo, so she literally is sunshine. <gasps> Aren't you sunshine? Aren't you? She just looks at me like, are you crazy? That's how she looks at me like. <laughs> you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Oh, spit up. A little bit of spit up. You are my sunshine. My only sunshine. You make me happy. 
Oh, spit up, spit up, spit up. Ooh. Oh. Look at that face. You are my sunshine. I need a burp rug, but I don't have one here, so I can burp up on here. Okay, guys, so yeah, this is going to be the end of my video because um, my sweet baby is needs my attention almost 24-7, so it's kind of hard to film, and I hate to hear her cry, so I don't let her cry. I've heard of sleep training. Um, I don't know if it's good to do or not. Maybe I should start trying it. Um, I have not been sleep training her. I pretty much, well, a little bit. I'll wake her up a little bit in the day so she sleeps more at night, but not really sleep training her. So, yeah, maybe I should try it. Um, but, yeah, I love being a mom. I always wanted to be a mom since my youngest memories. I've just wanted to be a mom all my whole life. So, yeah, I always knew I would be a mom. I just always wanted to. Um... Just love baby. Love my baby. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know. So, <laughs> she's going to want to nurse to here in a minute. Like, she wants to nurse pretty much 24-7. If she's awake, she wants to nurse. There's no question. There's very little times she doesn't want to nurse. She's sleeping or nursing. That's the two options. Um, so... Yeah, pretty much she completes my heart, and I love her so much. We both love her so much, me and David. David and I, we are just obsessed. We cannot believe we created her. She's a little miracle. Every baby's a miracle, but, you know, she's extra special because she's ours, and we just love her so much. We can't believe she is ours. And I always said from the very first day she looked just like David, and people are saying that too online. Um, yeah, so I, 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 it's hard for me to see myself in her, but I can kind of see it. But I just see a mini David <laughs> when I look at her, which is so cute. I mean, she's a Leo, so it makes sense that they look similar because Leos have a certain look, kind of. And she has a little cat Leo nose. It's so cute. She definitely looks like a Leo. But she's Libra rising, like me, so she is going to look... Like a Libra, like mommy. So yeah, we'll see what she ends up looking like, or who, because they change a lot. So, anyways, she wants to nurse, so we have to go. We have important business to handle, huh, Aurora? Say bye. She's not in the mood. Okay, baby. Okay, baby. Let me lay you down so I can turn this off. Oof, she's heavy. I'm like, how am I going to hold her you soon? You're so heavy. Oh, you don't want to be laid down, though. I know you're going to cry. Okay, guys, so she wants to be nursed, so I have to go. But I didn't get to fully do my <laughs> what I wanted to say in this video, but, you know, baby stuff. So, yeah. Pretty much I'm just like... I feel like I censored myself in the past to make other people happy or try to walk on eggshells to make other people happy, but that era is over completely for me. Um, I'm just like fully reactivated into my true self, which is like I'm just going to fully live for me and be for me about what I want because I feel like I care too much about what other people want and think when it comes to my life and how I should be acting. So now that part's over, the era's over. I just was reactivated from this certain encounter I went through recently, postpartum. Someone trying to criticize me postpartum. I just can't. I'm not going to go into the details. It's not online. It's someone in, li in real life, okay? Um, I don't even care about online anymore. It used to trigger me at the beginning. I don't even, like, nothing anyone can say to me online bothers me anymore. Anyways, so. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. I just feel like I'm like always I want people to like me in life so I'm like extra nice to people but like when they are fucked up to me that era's over you know what I'm saying so it's just like yeah 
now I'm just like truly, truly living for me and to what makes me happy and doing what's right for me and just like if things don't work out because I'm being so genuine in my living and in my life and what I want in life and just living for myself, then if they don't work out, then they were not meant to work out, you know? Once you become really genuine, things that aren't meant for you will fall away and then you stop clinging to all these things that you think you need and you start acting different ways because you want to cling to these things and you you become non-genuine to yourself because you want to cling to these things. But then once you realize, oh, if I'm genuine and these things break away and fall away from your, my life or leave my life, it's because they weren't meant for my life and it's actually a blessing because there's a reason it's not sticking, you know? There's a reason it's not working with you when you're genuine. It's because it's not right for you. If that makes sense, let me know because it makes really good sense to me. So, yeah, just be genuine. That's like the answer to everything in life. Be genuine and have integrity to yourself and your truth and to love and truth and light. And if you have integrity and genuinity, then your life will just like the path of your life will just fall into place. Um, and that goes for not holding on to things too tightly that aren't meant for you and all that stuff because if you're holding on to stuff tightly and like afraid to lose things and you're acting outside of yourself to keep those things in your life, then you're not being genuine in a way um, and then it's creating more conflict or tension in your life in some way. So yeah, just don't cling to things too tightly. Just be genuine and true and live right for you and righteously and in alignment and the right things will come into your life and the wrong things will fall away. So that's what I'm like re realizing because I knew that before, but I, sometimes you just forget and you need to reactivate that within yourself and just be like release the grip onto things in your life and just be yourself and put yourself first because no one else is going to. You have to put yourself first in this life because no one else will. That's like how life is. So always put yourself first. Do what's good for your life and right for you. And um, the right people and the right things will be in your life. You don't have to cling to anything in life like harshly like that. You just have to be true and be a good person, you know. And you will live a good life. I truly believe that. Um... And when I say put yourself first, that doesn't mean don't care about other people. I'm just saying when it comes to certain things, don't self-sacrifice all the time because it's not healthy. And it's not going to manifest a life in alignment with you because you're not being in alignment with you. So that's what I mean. Yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm surprised she's chilling. Thank you, baby. She lets me do my video. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I was meaning by the beginning of the video and um yeah it's really important and it's so much less stress when you don't cling to things in life when you just trust and flow with life and that's what a lot of like the yogis and the you know spiritual teachers say is just like flow with life release things let go let go let go you know and just go with life don't cling to things and it's so scary that most of the time we don't do that. But when you truly do that, it's like, wow. I gotta change whatever. <laughs> when you truly do that, it's just like living in a whole new reality. And life is actually so much better. And more things that are in alignment come towards you from the universe. Because you're just relaxed and releasing. And you're not holding on to all these things, you know? So it manifests a more aligned life. So I think it's super, super important to truly be in that flow state, that release state, you know, because if you're, you're clinging to things, your fists start closed and you can't receive anything new. But when you're releasing and you're just open and you're relaxed, then you can receive what's truly meant for you from the universe. So yeah, you don't want to meditate like this. <laughs> you know, you want to be open to what's, in alignment for you because the truth is you don't manifest what you want you manifest who you are what you are what your vibration is so if you're like oh I'm gonna be like this and trying to manifest all these things with like a clenched fist it's not gonna work you have to just really realign yourself and your vibration and who you are and the correct things will flow to you so 
that's number one. It's not trying to grab things outside of yourself and cling to things. So yeah. <laughs> Anyways, and it's a lot less stressful of a life too. Like all the stress goes away when you stop clinging to things. Because most of the time we're clinging to things that aren't truly in alignment for our highest self in life. Majority of things I think we cling to are just not for us. That's why we have to cling to them because they're not for us. They're trying to float away. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, and that's the thing, like, the saying, if you love something, let it go, if it's meant to be, it will be, it's 100% true, if you're meant to be with someone, you will, because the universe literally will bring you together, because it's meant to be, it's alignment, it's vibrational alignment, you don't have to force a relationship, if you're forcing something, it's not meant to be. Anyways, guys, I gotta go, she's being fussy, love y'all so much, bye!